Welcome. My name is Jeff Adams. I'm a member of the Roslyn City Council and the Roslyn Ronald Clown Heritage Club. Roslyn's first Labor Day Festival Parade began in 1904 when the Mines unionized. The festival continued for several years, eventually dying out, closing when the mines closed in 1963. The festival started up again in dedication of the Coal Miners Memorial in 1986, which is behind us. And in 1999, it became the Coal Miners Festival, which included a process to nominate a selected member of our community that had worked in the local coal mines, recognizing them with the title of King of Coal. This is a community-wide celebration, our area's rich historical heritage and remembrance of the diverse ethnic roots of our, our area's past. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate this tradition and crown this year's King of Coal, Fred Fisher. If you would all please stand as the Clown Roslyn BFW Post 1373 presents the colors. Okay, I'm going to begin the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, in liberty and justice for all. Now, Jessica Ethrup will begin singing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting members. As a fifth generation member of one of the original families to settle here in Roslyn in 1886, I'm proud to help carry on the traditions and memories of the families who labored in the mines and worked to support the coal mining industry. My grandpa, Floyd Adams, was a coal miner, as was his father and his grandfather. My grandpa Adams died the year I was born, and I didn't have the pleasure to having him in my life. My maternal grandfather, Joe Melis from Clayholm, was a coal miner as well, and so was his father. When the mines shut down in 1963, my grandpa Joe and many others, for the last two years, they were not able to leave their full pensions unless they moved for work. These miners decided to go up to Usabella, the mine in Usabella, Alaska. 
my grandpa and my grandma moved to Usabella along with many others and finished their mines to receive their full pensions. This is important if people realize that many of these people put their lives in there and didn't have time to have an opportunity to get their pensions so they had moved to another town where they can collect that. Over the years, he shared many stories with me about the coal mines, which was, really hits me in the heart. In 2005, at the age of 92, my grandfather was cho chosen from the Heritage Club to receive the honor of King of Coal. He passed away on July 30th, 31st, a little over a month before the ceremony. My mom and my aunt accepted the honors in his place, and at that time, my grandfather became King of Coal and this event came very to my heart. This year's King Cole recipient, Fred Fisher, passed away on August 2nd. We will honor Fred and his family today as our 23rd King of Cole. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge any dignitaries in town, which I believe Laura Shawness, our county commissioner. I'd like to introduce Marie Adams, the Heritage Club president, Good morning. Thank you for coming out. It's actually a very beautiful day, but windy, so I'm going to have to try and... I have a few pages because I have notes. Um, uh, the Roslyn Ronald Cleon Heritage Club, or we call ourselves the Heritage Club for short since that is kind of a long name, was founded in 1987 as a social breakfast club and later formalized in 1995 when it was incorporated as a nonprofit. The Heritage Club was established to preserve, memorialize, and communicate the local history of Roslyn, Ronald, and Cleelum areas. I'm going to add Easton to that because they're the we always often forget about them. Uh, their first big mission was to raise funds and build this beautiful memorial. Uh, the project was a collaboration and hard work of many of our members in our community, and it was built to commemorate and honor the many coal miners and their families that worked in our area's mines. It also served as a remembrance to those who perished in the mines. Since then, volunteers and members of our club have maintained the site, which is on the city of Roslyn property. I'd like to introduce our board members that are here today. I'll tell them all, let's see. Braven Ben Sack is our chair. Great Wade Braven. George Phillips. Tony Fields. I don't think Tony's here. I haven't seen her yet. Uh, Judy Plesha and Sam Mabo, he is here as well. Sam, there you go. And then our uh, officers, myself, I'm the president, Linda Sulker in the back here, she's our vice president, Shannon O'Malley, our secretary, and Janet Bland is not here, she's our treasurer. Today there is little visible evidence that the mines existed, thus the possibility exists that this local history and the story of the rich ethnic mix, which was part of local mining history, will be lost. Our area is changing quickly and it can be difficult to witness this change. Celebrations like today's provide an opportunity to share our unique history with new members of the community and visitors alike. Today, we are here to honor a former coal miner and his family. There aren't many miners left, emphasizing why it's so important for us to recognize and celebrate those that remain. Our board and officers came up with the idea to honor all of our living coal miners. Those who have been honored as King Coal, as those, as uh, well as those who haven't been bestowed um, that honor yet. So our last living coal miners do not have lengthy stints in the mine um, like their predecessors, you know, where they had like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 plus years in the mines. But their stories, <coughs> excuse me, their stories and experiences collectively capture the final chapter of our area's coal mining industry. Thank you to these men and their families for sharing these tidbits of information, an important piece of our history. We had a program last night called Dinner with the Miners. Um, and we have some of those uh, little bits of stories that are in the program. They're in the back table if you want to grab one. And I want to thank, at this time, thank you to, to the people who helped put that together, uh, gather all the miners, get their stories, uh, do little interviews with them, uh, do the editing, uh, those, those type of things. So on our team was Shannon O'Malley. It was actually her idea. She's our secretary. Nick Henderson, who unfortunately could be here today, but. Um, he's like the historian guru around here. Dave Franklin, another historian guru, and Dave's in the back here. Wave, Dave. 
Uh, Linda Salter is our editor and historian guru as well. So thank you uh, for helping with this really important project. Um, I'm honored to recognize our living coal miner miners, and if you can stand, maybe just wave, then you don't have to stand up. Jim Ash, I don't believe he's here. Uh, Frank Brozovich is not here. Ed Browett is not here. Ed Bogatchis, he is here. Uh, Junior Cernick, I thought I saw him. Um, he was King Cole of 2021. Uh, Daryl Chapota, senior. I'm not sure he's going to be here today, but he's King Cole in 2016 along with his family. Dennis Erb is not up here. Jeff Oshadish, he's King Cole from 2017, and I believe he'll be here for the parade. Um, Eddie, Jim, Eddie Russum, he's here. And our King Cole last year, Leonard Rushton. Tom Willett was here last night. And then we had a, a surprise visit, uh, someone we missed, uh, which is what we were afraid of, is missing someone. Um, Albert Stone, he is actually the oldest coal miner. He is 94 years young, and today would have been his anniversary. It's his wife. He was married 71 years. To a Roslyn girl. We also want to recognize the Tellerico brothers. Mike, Fred, Fred's here. Where do you go, Fred? Yeah. Frank Jr. and Dave, who all grew up here in Roslyn um, as descendants of coal miners. And they represent our ties to coal mining in East Valley, Alaska, which um, Jeff mentioned that his grandpa went up there to finish pension, his full pension. And that was a very typical story. They either went to, up to East Valley or over to Black Diamond so they could finish their pensions. The uh, list of the past King Coles, since we've been doing this since uh, 20, I mean 1999. Uh, John Farrow, 2000 is Frank Cernick, 2001 is Joe Osbolt, 2002 is Tony Minrich, 2003 Bob Pulich, 2004 Fred Delhant, 2005 Joe Milas, Jeff's grandpa, uh, 2006 Marion Maris, 2007 Joseph Lawachi. 2008, Ed Walkery. 2009, Samuel Craven. 2010, Elmer Daliski. Dalif, I, I think that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna struggle with a couple of these. 2011, John Milo Blavich. 2012, the Barrett family. 2013 was the miners that died in the mines. 2014 was Gib Rushton. 2015, Marcy Bogatchis. She was the queen, that's the way she was kind of headed this uh, whole, spearheaded this whole effort to get this done. And her husband, Ed, is here today representing Marcy up in heaven. 2016 was the Chapota family. 2017 was canceled due to the Jolly Mountain Fire and it was Jeff Oshadis and the Oshadis family. We recognized them a year later in 2018. 2019 was Darwin Canyon. Uh, 2020 we canceled due to COVID. And then 2021 was Junior Cernick and 2022 Leonard Rushton. So I also want to recognize the Pioneer Day Queens that are present. Uh, the Pioneer Day Queen is a tradition dating back to 1969. Um, a committee, which is actually currently part of the Rotary Club, choose women from the Upper County, uh, representing many ethnic groups to represent the traditions and legacy of the Upper Kittitas County. They have a reign of one year, which they attend social functions within Kittitas County. And today we have our queen, Jeannie Precious. She's right here. And Jeannie also made this beautiful wreath that you'll see here in a moment when we put it up there. Oh, and Jody did too, her daughter. And um, let's see, who else do we have? Joan Bresnikar. She was last year's. Oh, I'm sorry, Julie. I'm looking at Joan. <laughs> Hi, Joan. <laughs> Um, are there anyone here? I don't think the other. Um, I'm going to name the other people who are living in the, the Queens because it's quite a large list. We have Vi Burke is still alive, Pat Woodell, uh, Olga Newton, Bev Ballard, and Donna Willett, and then Rose Bata too. So, welcome Queens. Yeah. Now uh, Jessica Ellicott will be back here singing Working Man. It's a working man I am, and 
I've been down underground And I swear to God if I ever see the sun Or for any length of time I can hold it in my mind I never again will go down underground of 16 years. Oh, he quarreled with his peers, and he swears there'll never be another one. In the dark recess of the mine, where you age before your time, and the cold dust lies heavy, on your lungs. It's a working man I am, and I've been down underground. And I swear to God if I ever see the sun, or for any length of time, I can hold it in my mind. I never again will go down underground At the age of 64 He'll greet you at the door And he'll gently lead you by the arm In the dark recess of the mind he can take you back in time And he'll tell you of the hardships that were there It's a working man I am And I've been down underground And I swear to God if I ever see the sun or for any length of time I can hold it in my mind I never again will go down underground Thank you, Jessica, that was great. Okay, I am now going to introduce Shannon O'Malley of the Ros and Roslyn Heritage Club, and she is our secretary. All right, so um, I am here to introduce Bob Fisher and uh, Maria Fisher and his family who are going to be um, taking the honor of representing Fred. Fred um, passed away just in the last month um, after we selected him to be our representative King Cole and um, he was really a perfect choice for King Cole as um, I'm sure many people know in Roslyn there's special people here and that's kind of my favorite thing about Roslyn is you meet these people who just encapsulate just the best of us and Fred was one of those people he I met him in the museum and he came in a couple times uh, and sat down and told me his stories um, and he really to me was a perfect example of a coal miner in his spirit he had that um, kind of optimism about working through hard things and he'd been through hard things in his life and lived through hard years he was still you know a strong person in his faith a strong person in his love of his country and his fellow man and he was just um, really spoke to me as the perfect representative of, of King Cole so I'd like to bring um, the Fisher family up now. They 
they're going to share some um, stories of their dad. Thank you. How many people knew Fred Fisher or Clyde Fisher? Good, good. How many knew uh, Bobby Fisher? Okay, so I, I'm not, I'm Bob Fisher, so not, uh, my, both of our names were Robert. My mother's uh, grandfather was Robert Rankin, and my uh, Bobby's grandfather was Robert Clark. He, he was named after the Clark side of the family, I think, so. Because we were, uh, my dad was, uh, Frederick Clyde and his great-grandfather who ran the uh, Northern Pacific Depot at uh, Upham and then he down at Thorpe for 50 years, him and Eva Fisher, my sister's name Eva as well, but they ran the depot for many years. So we're going to talk a little bit about our family. Our, our, they lived up on 208 uh, Idaho Street. So my dad, would he would have loved to have been here. I mean, much more than me. I, I don't feel I can do, he's a storyteller, he was a great person. But I'm going to try to pinch it for him to fill in. So um, we got some words we've written down. So we're going to. Uh, so. Let's see, so good morning. I'm Bob Fisher, and this is Marie Fisher. Um, I'm the son of Fred Fisher, King Cole of 2023. My three sisters, Eva and Sandra, are here today. Um, and our sister Ruth, our oldest sister, is not able to attend, uh, along with my brother-in-law, Steve Lorenz, uh, cousins Maria Fisher, Mark Huxford, my kids Brandon and Abby Fisher, who are Fred's grandchildren, all who are here today to celebrate this time. We'd like to start with a special uh, thanks to Maria Adams and Shannon uh, O'Malley for the, uh, and the entire Roslyn Ronald Cleland Heritage Club. My father and and mom were longtime members of the club. They came to the meetings. My dad drove up here when he was 92 and parked in Maria's uh, you know, parking lot and watched the parade. And my dad, as he got older, his driving wasn't, uh, he wasn't the best driver, but he, he got by. So he still had a license when he passed away August 2nd, but my dad loved trucks and trains and he, he loved equipment and they were, you know, him and his brother and father, they were loggers and my dad loved trains. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that um, I'll be taking his place as a Heritage Club member in the near future, so um, we're, we're on, on behalf of our parents. But what a wonderful weekend of events. Our family had an amazing time at the dinner with the uh, miners last night. It was a lot of fun to see uh, and talk to everyone. I really enjoyed talking to Mr. Rushton, Mr. Ash, and Mr. Stone. Um, this guy's got a lot of, uh, I don't know if you guys knew my dad, um, but you guys had a lot of good stories. So it was, it was a pleasure to you know, share time with you guys last night. Um, my dad loved to share stories about the old timers and the old times. He really would have enjoyed last night. So he just loved to sit around and BS. He, in the end, he didn't hear very well because he did a lot. He was a farmer, looked at a lot of power take-off equipment, so he lost a lot of his hearing. So he, uh, we miss our father and cousin Bob Fisher. It would have been super nice for dad and cousin Bobby to share this uh, honor of King Cole um, with us today. We, we sat and watched the parade together. Dad passed away on August 2nd, and Cousin Bobby passed away on June 27th. So that's, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit. My father was really excited to be King Cole. He got put in, he had to go to the hospital, had a little issue with cancer in it, and they, um, they treated it, and it was a pretty aggressive treatment, and that treatment just got him. So he, uh, he ended up his last, he had a great life till his last six weeks he spent in the hospital in the uh, rehabilitation center. But he, we weren't gonna tell him it was gonna be a surprise, and, he finally, he was sick, so I told him, I said, you know, Dad, you got elected King Cole. You know, you've been coming up here, and you know, I thought you do. So we, my sister nominated him, and, you know, we worked with, uh, you know, to tell his story. And it was a good story. My dad didn't spend a lot of time in the mine, but he worked as a 14-year-old. He drove the dynamite truck with a guy named Stanley Osmanovich, who I think Stanley wrote shotgun. My dad drove the dynamite truck, but he worked in this building here at the Northwest Company Improvement Store for four years, from 14 to 18. And... Uh, he said, so he was involved in the mines, but uh, he was very happy that he got King Cole. He wanted to be with us and he worked super hard at his rehabilitation, but he just ran out of steam in the end. He just, his, uh, his engine stopped. So the entire Fisher family has a long history um, with the coal and railroad industry in Kittitas County. And they kind of, I see them all go together, logging coal and trucking and steam. They all go together. So we'd like to share a little history about our families involved today. And Maria's going to share about our Uncle Jay. I don't know how many people knew Uncle Jay or Jay Fisher. So he, 
he was quite a, a businessman. He owned a, a good portion of this town, I think. He's still, some of his uh, kids own it today. So our grandfather, Clyde Fisher, was a rope engineer at mine number three. I heard this story many times, you know, from my dad over the last five years. We spent a lot of time together. And for, for over 20 years, Clyde, as a young man, he was working for the Cascade Lumber Company down in the Tianaway, and they were logging, and he ran the steam engines, which were pretty complex in the logging back in the day. And they, the superintendent down in the Tianaway told Murphy that, you know, he's, Clyde was a great young man, and he, they were going to shut down. He knew a year before when they were shutting down in the Tianaway. So Clyde uh, Murphy, who's superintendent of mines in Roslyn, hired um, Clyde to come work, and Clyde worked in the number three and pretty much until it shut down. So he was... Uh, um, the, uh, he ran the steam operations in number three. Uh, my dad always told this story because we always would talk. My dad loved community, loved, he was, you know, when, ran the voting booth for the, you know, political voting. My, they were very involved in the community. They would, you know, talk about giving your shirt off your back. My mom and dad would give their shirt off their back to anybody. You know, they, we had, they had church members. One, when she, my mom would find out somebody didn't have a TV, they would, she would give their TV to the person. And my dad would, come home they wouldn't have a TV because my mom had given it away but they uh, Clyde and Alice moved to Ronald and they lived about the house is still there Maria and my dad and I we trekked all over kind of tracking these stories down to see if they were true or not and the house that they lived in was about 50 yards from the entrance to the number three mine I'm not sure why they moved down here to Idaho I was thinking about that last night why why they moved down here to Roslyn when they he worked right next door he could walk to work about 50 feet but I think my grandfather rode with Ed Rushton who was uh, Leonard's dad, they rode to work together in the car. I don't know who had the car, but they all became really good friends. Um, so this, uh, this is where Fred and, and Jay were born um, and uh, at uh, number three. They were born by number three. Um, they, uh, so after the mine stopped, the number three, Clyde's job ended. He continued to be involved with the mining. He hauled mine timber to the mines. Fisher and Sons Trucking hauled mine timber, coal, garbage. They had the contract for garbage. And my dad and Jay, I think they got that contract when they were under, they got a contract to do the dredge for the Northern Pacific Depot in Cleelum, and they, they weren't 18 years old. So they had bought a truck from Benny Benjamin. They weren't 18 years old, but they, so the mom had to go sign the contract. So Alice had to sign that contract. But they continued to deliver uh, freight. They did less than carload deliveries. And, Clyde and Jay and Fred were involved in the trucking business. My dad wrote a nice little article about that. Carl Nelson, who wrote an article on August 31st in the North, the Kid Test Tribune, he, it's an amazing article. I don't have that good of content. I was, asking, I was gonna call Carl last night about 10.30 and say, Carl, can you help me with my speech this morning? But I, it got a little late. So um, our, our you know, father, Fred, had wonderful memories of his work experience as a, uh, as a boy and a young man. His first involvement was in this town was him and Jay, they were paper boys. They first were on foot and then they were on bike. They'd come, they, they made a lot of money so they, and they got tips from the miners, but that's how they first got to know the miners. Obviously, the miners had spoke English because I don't think the miners that didn't speak English probably didn't get a paper. So they knew them, they take their money. They, they had really bad teeth because they would go to the candy store, they'd get for 10 cents, they'd get a pop and a candy bar and they, every day they got a pop and a candy bar. They had lots of money. My dad never, he, they didn't want for money as a kid, but they, um, the, uh, so they're, uh, he got to know many neighbors that way, their families through his paper route. His next uh, job was at the, as a 14 year old working at the company store, and he unloaded, they unloaded the trains, the siding was back behind the store here where Maria's house is, and they unloaded trains, cars of lumber and potatoes and all kinds of stuff, so they got to know the, uh, um, the families and they service the families. John Lanigan, I don't know if Le John Lanigan's daughter's here, but he was a general manager and he hired my dad as a 14 year old. And the, uh, the he, my dad had a lot of stories at the uh, working here, the dynamite truck deliveries. He, uh, there was a, um, so as a 14 year old boy who loved trucks, trains and equipment, this was a perfect job. He got lots of uh, fond memories working with many of the families and the miners who shopped at the store. So after going off to college, he played football. My dad was, he went to Easton because there were some political issues and Clyde was involved in some politics. He later became a deputy sheriff, but they, the Ross and Clay Elm didn't get along, or Rosalind didn't get along with Clay Elm, so they went to Easton is the story that I had heard. But in 1949, 1950, my dad came back, his football program at uh, University of uh, um, 
St. Mary's University in the Bay Area was canceled. They, they got a new president and he canceled football. He wasn't a big football fan. So my dad didn't have money to pay to go to college at, at St. Uh, Mary. So he came home in 1949-50, he worked as a track player, then a timberman for the rate of 13.68 per hour. After, after his seven hour, 15 minute shift, he would go home and they had a coal company. They hauled coal. My dad, they were truckers and they, they loved trucking. They hauled a ton of hay for a, a hay broker down in Kittitas County, but they loved trucking. They, they were truckers by heart. And my uncle Jay, he continued on, but he, at nights and weekends, they hauled hay. Um, dad shared many stories of hauling coal for the NWI and the Patricks. He seemed to know these people, like, like you know, Archie Patrick and the Patrick family. You know, he hauled, had called coal, he's 18, 19 years old, they had a truck, and they seemed to be friends. But as the NWI and the Patricks would go back and forth with the contracts, you know, CW may have charged, you know, worked with one or the other. They hauled coal for both, so they juggled back and forth. But he had many fond memories of working in the mines. There was a lot of camaraderie um, amongst the miners and a strong sense of community he always felt with the, the miners. It was a team and teamwork. And one kind of funny thing, my dad would fall asleep at a, a drop of a nickel. You'd sit him down and he'd fall asleep. And he, I'd ask him, like, Dad, why do you fall asleep? He goes, well, when you work in the mines, you get a break and the whistle blows, you got to learn to go to sleep for that five minute break or 10 minute break or whatever. So it's like a catnap so he'd fall asleep. And I'd be interested to get you guys part of that but that's how he, you know, we'd go to church and fall asleep immediately. That's how he had that skill set. So he, he always claimed that. But over the last 30 years, my dad, um, of his life, my dad spent many hours at the North Pacific Railroad Museum. He, it was in Toppenish, Washington. It's quite a museum. And they spent a lot of time, and a lot of the local community members are there. And we've purchased some cars, and they, they've done a lot of work. But he's working in restoring steam engines, being a docent in the museum, sharing stories with visitors, and playing train with his buddies. Never uh, did the memories of the trains and coal mines uh, get far from his mind. So he, he always, he just loved that stuff. So, he, you know, if he was here today, he could tell us about that. But um, we went to Brainerd, Minnesota for the N National Imp North Pacific Railroad Convention a couple years ago. And my dad, all these, you know, old timers like us, you know, they were all sitting around and telling stories about the coal mines. And Rosalind had a pretty good name throughout the country. And Tacoma was a big MP depot. And so they, they dad had a great, time sharing stories about the operations of Roslyn Mines and the stories of trains going over Stampy Pass and you know from Easton where they put on the helpers and my dad you know the million ton coal pile down in Cleon my dad remembered that stuff like you know it just it was very clear in his mind so he um, I sure wish he was here to share this honor with us today it meant a lot to him my dad's younger brother Jay Fisher he was Frank was his name but Frank Jerome and he, they, people called him Jay and his nephew Bobby we're also very involved with the NWI and the coal business. My cousin Maria is going to share their story with some of the words about their, um, you know, and their involvement because it was significant. So I'm going to turn it over to Maria, and uh, we'd love to, uh, you know, our families here today. We'd love to, you know, especially you guys said, you know, he. I think uh, Gib and my dad were the same age, and Jay and uh, Leonard were the same age, right? You guys were, and then their dads were best friends. So it's kind of like. You're, it's like you don't have that, uh, but it's nice. Not very many people live to be in their 90s, so that we're, we're lucky on that. So Maria's going to uh, tell our story, and, and I guess. I'm going to make one correction for you, Robert. You said your dad was making 13.68 an hour, but that was 13.68 a day. Like Robert said, the Fisher family was always involved with the railroad and the coal industry. And Frank, Fred's brother, purchased purchased the Roslyn Cascade Coal Company in the 60s and he operated that delivering both stoker and lump coal and the coal yard was located at the old Hattrick mine coal yard above Ronald next to the veneer plant up against that big giant snag, slag pile and the railroad tracks originally ran all the way to that coal yard and ended there and the way shack that was in that location was moved by my husband Bob to the empty lot next to Stonehouse 101 in 1997. Now at the time of Frank Fisher's death in 1977, there were about 800 coal customers that he delivered to. 
but the coal came from Wyoming via the, U the UP Railroad and the NP and later BN. Frank also ran a small sawmill on land that he leased from the company near the number nine mine site for a little while and then they, they increased the lease and he shut that down. He operated a logging truck and many pieces of heavy equipment. One of Frank's dreams was to build and operate a tourist railroad out of Roslyn. And to that end, he had purchased a steam engine in Oregon and he had plans to bring it up and start his railroad, but he passed before he could have it delivered and after his death it was sold. And when the local mining company held the big auction of equipment in 1964, right out there, Frank Fisher purchased many, many pieces of mining equipment, cutters, motors, coal cars, and just metal. And a lot of it's still up at the house. <laughs> and when the company wanted the number nine and the number 10 mine entrances permanently shut, Frank was hired to fabricate very large steel doors that were placed over those entrances. I think number 10 still has its cover, but when Swift Water Cellars discarded the number nine metal door to place bars over the entrance. It was, of course, picked up by Bobby Fisher and brought back to his home, so it's up there now. <laughs> after, <clears throat> after Frank's untimely death in 77, the coal company was taken over by his son, Bobby, who delivered to all the schools. When I married him, he still delivered to the schools. The businesses in Cleelum and Rosslyn had by that time quit most of them, but the Star Cleaners, C&E Variety, the Freezer Shop, the Cleolum Hospital, Victory Sporting Goods, that's just a few of the businesses that I still have, I still have the receipts for all the, that, and all of, a lot of used burn coal also. It was a very dirty, dirty business. And there's still quite a few houses with coal bins that still have coal in them. When the train stopped going to Ronald in 86, Bob had to move his coal yard down to the Y in Cleelum, and he operated there until 96, 97, and the big snowstorm uh, flattened his building, so then he moved the coal yard to his home, and the coal then came by truck. Down to three customers in 2017, he decided to close the business, and I think that's the last related coal business in Kittitas County. And I looked it up. In 1980, 1,848 tons of coal were delivered by Bob. And he also delivered Coke to the Roslyn Foundry. And that's not the kind of Coke you're thinking. <laughs> and in 1980, the Foundry could not pay for a load of Coke, which came out of Chattanooga and was very expensive. It was about two or three times the price of coal. So the Foundry turned that operation over to Bob and so there he was stuck running a foundry in the coal business but the foundry was soon sh soon shut down by a government agency I'm not sure if it was the EPA or the DOE but it was due to the billowing black clouds of ash which would burn holes in laundry which was hung downwind in Ducktown <laughs> so that was the end of the foundry Bobby's funeral, but Bobby had an amazing funeral. And the Whitey, the minister, he, Whitey talked about uh, if you had a nickname, um, you know, he liked you. So if you had a nickname, you knew he liked you. But in closing, thank you very much for the uh, coming out today. And we look forward to seeing you all at the parade and future Heritage Club events. On behalf of the entire Fisher family, we thank the uh, Heritage Club for this special honor. We know that it would mean a ton and a lot to my dad and to our Uncle Jay and to Clyde and you know, Fred from another generation of Bobby. So thanks so much, and you guys are a good group. We look forward to joining your group. Thank you, that was wonderful stories. Thank you so much. And King tight here, we want to first do this. We'd like to present you your Fred Fisher, King of Coal. And we'd like to get you your coal shovel as well with a, his name. And if we can get you now to hang the wreath up on the coal miner, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much.
Okay. We are going to uh, play taps right now with the miners that, that were killed in the past mines and the other miners that have passed away. Taps will be played by Jim Pierce. Thank you. Okay, um, we're going to go through the thank yous here um, to make this event possible. We're going to start with the Heritage Club Board of Directors, uh, Braben Benzak, Judy Plesha, Tony Fields, Sam Mabo, George Phillips, Officers President Maria Adams, Vice President Linda Solter, Treasurer Jana Bland, Secretary Shannon O'Malley, Garrett Tallarico providing the setup and the sound system, the Clelm Roslyn VFW Post 1373. Thank you very much. Also, for making this beautiful wreath, it was Judy Precious and Jody Birchock. Uh, the Clelm Bakery, Clelm Bakery providing cookies, the Redbird Cafe for providing the coffee, the Tribune for their great coverage and support of all of our events, Kittitas County Outdoors and Kittitas County Chamber of Commerce. Um, when this event is done, we'll be moving the chairs to the front here on 903, right by these signs, so you can sit down and enjoy the parade. We will provide some tents. Um, there will also be cold water, cookies, and coffee served behind you on the tables for you. Um, so please be patient while we reset up. Um, we want to also thank the Kittitas County Lodging and Taxing Tax Funds for this. They help provide the funding to put these events on. Um, at, also at this point, um, Alex Thropas and Emma Epperson, graduate students from the U Utah State University, is conducting a study of our community. And they will be walking around and they'd love to find out more family history and history of the coal miners around. So please, um, will those two raise their hands so they know who you are? Uh, we would love it if you can spread some history with them. If you're around, they'd love to hear some more. And uh, all this can be recorded and documented so we can continue these great historical events. Um, at, that, at this point in time, I want to thank you all for c coming and supporting the importance of this importance of our local history and the event for Fred Fisher. Thank you very much. Thank you.